Hi, this is Brass Check, and we're doing some follow-up on the assassination of the Iranian military leader. And again, Brass Check finds itself in the position of having to do the work that ABC, NBC, CBS, The New York Times, CNN, The Washington Post, and surprisingly, lots and lots of progressive news outlets don't seem to be able to do. Um, let's get put this thing in perspective here. I think it's clear from the pictures of the funeral where literally millions of people, millions of people in a country of just 80 million uh, came out to honor this commander uh, on his funeral. So this was an incredibly, and you can't force people to do that, right? You can't uh, you know, compel people to come out and engage in something like that. That is genuine grief. Uh, this man was an incredibly popular person in Iran, and we're going to talk about why in a second. And we, we the United States, um, has essentially bought ourselves with this illegal action. By the way, that's the thing that amazes me. We're not at war with Iran. There's no declaration of war. Uh, there wasn't even a charge against this guy, right? You don't go in and just murder somebody because you, you feel like it. I mean, that violates U.S. law, that violates international law, and it's silence on the, it's just the, the blatant illegality of this, not to mention the immorality of this. But the, um, through this action, the U.S. has bought itself the multi-generational hatred of tens of millions of Iranians. Let me repeat that again. This is not something, you know, we're going to forget about it next week. Um, the Iranians aren't going to forget about it. What if somebody did that to, uh, we don't have any national heroes, but if what if somebody did that to one of our national heroes? Um, you know, John F. Kennedy was assassinated over 60 years ago. There are tens of millions of people that are still upset about that and, uh, and, and still believe it was a, uh, a government organized conspiracy. And I think they have a lot of reason to believe that. So imagine, just put the shoe on the other foot. This guy was incredibly popular for reasons that I'm going to explain in a second. He was murdered in cold blood, um, really without any justification. And the stories that are coming out is that he was actually there at the request of the Iraqi government. By the way, he didn't sneak into Iraq to do some nefarious thing. He flew in on a commercial flight. He had a diplomatic passport. You know, and the, there, is, there is at least one account that says that he was invited to Iraq by the Iraqi government in the hopes to negotiate some kind of a back-channel deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Now, that's what this guy had been doing all along. Yeah, he's a military man. He's a general. Um, and the purpose, one of the purposes of generals, uh, I mean, let's, let's just not put a fine point on it. They're butchers. That's, that's the job we give them. Their job is to send young men to their death to cause the death of other young men. That's war. Uh, we, we devote uh, the vast majority of our uh, tax base uh, to supporting that. So we seem to be on board with it. Why shouldn't other countries be on board with it? He was a general. So all this talk about all the nefarious things he did well, he's a general and he was at war. Um, but anyway, for not weeks or months or years, but generations, there will be tens of millions of Iranians who will bear a bitter enmity against the United States for this illegal action. Now, who benefits from that? Does the United States benefit from that? We don't have any, we don't have any reason to do that, to create that kind of, of hatred anywhere. And the idea that this is consequence free, that you know, we can just run around the world and do these things and it will never come back and bite us, I mean, how stupid is that? 
So who benefited from manipulating Trump the idiot into doing this? Who benefits? Well, the, the U.S. defense industry, which includes a lot of U.S. generals who want to be paid now and they want to be paid really, really well when they retire, they benefit. But I, I tend to think that, um, well, I tend to think the defense industry loves this. Um, and I think the handful of U.S. military people that love it are, are, are rarity, but they, they exist. But the U.S. defense industry loves this. This is just the greatest thing that could ever happen. But there's another entity that benefits from this, and it's Israel. It's absolutely crystal clear. Israel loves it when the U.S. is in conflict with other countries in the Middle East. You know, what happened after 9-11? The head of Israel got on the TV within an hour and said, now they know what it's like. Now they're going to be our best ally. Think about that. What kind of a psychotic, twisted mind would respond to the murder of 3,000 people with, now they know what it's like? You know what? Israel never, Israel never in its entire history has suffered anything even close to 9-11. And yet the, the head of Israel, it was okay for him to come out and say, well, now you, now you know what it's like, and I guess we're going to be closer after this. So by making enemies for the United States in the Middle East, Israel believes that it's going to um, bolster its own relationship with the United States and allow uh, and continue the endless subsidization of Israel. Israel doesn't stand on its own. We pay its bills. The, the standard of living that Israelis enjoy as, as their government uh, butchers uh, and brutalizes uh, the Palestinian population um, their standard of living is subsidized by us. You pull out our, uh, our, our endless largesse, and they actually have to work for a living. And they don't get to live the great high life that they're enjoying. And boy, they are. You know, don't feel sorry for, you know, old, poor, downtrodden Israel. Uh, the standard of living there is very high. Uh, people there in, enjoy um, a, a perfectly fine uh, life at your expense, by the way. So anyway, this, this was a great moment for Israel. And um, who's got their, their hooks into Trump the idiot? You know, his, his uh, son-in-law is, is a raving uh, pro-Zionist, uh, pro-Israeli military nutcase. I mean, how, how much more blatant could it be? He makes Jerusalem the capital, the capital of Israel? Unreal. But who else benefits from this? And this is going to be educational, I think, for a lot of people. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia loves this, or certain elements in, in Saudi Arabia love this. Now, intelligent elements in, in Saudi Arabia don't love this, but they're few and far between, and they're not in control. Why does Saudi Arabia not love this? It would be a morning's work for Iran to destroy the oil refinery infrastructure and water purification, water uh, desalination infrastructure of Saudi Arabia and, and the other um, pirate countries down there. It wouldn't take long at all. And, um, you know, the oil refineries, they've got some money in the bank. They might survive those water desalination plants. You ever been to Saudi Arabia? You, you ever talked to anybody that's been there? You ever looked at it, uh, photographs of it? Uh, they'll last about three days without water. And Iran could take that out tomorrow. So smart people in Saudi Arabia do not think this was a good thing. But the um, psychotic people who run Saudi Arabia love this because they're Sunni Muslims and and Iran is Shia Muslims, and they are forever at war with each other. The, the extremist people are. It's that simple. It's like the Protestants and Catholics during the, uh, you know, the, 
the, uh, the Reformation. It's crazy. It's counterproductive. But that's what's going on. So Saudi Arabia, the hardliners, the, the, the psychotics in Saudi Arabia, love this. This is fantastic. So you might say, well, Saudi Arabia and Israel, they're not allies. How? I mean, well, they are. <laughs> How many terrorist acts has Al-Qaeda carried out on Israel? By the way, Al-Qaeda is a, is a, is a uh, uh, Saudi and Sunni extremist subsidized organization, plus the United States helping it. But primarily, that's its, that's its juice. So how many Al-Qaeda terrorist attacks have there been on Israel? Zero. And then we have ISIS, another Saudi Arabia creation with help from Qatar, with help from elements of the United States, another Sunni extremist group. How many ISIS terrorist attacks have there been on Israel? Zero. Think about that. Think about the close proximity of all those lunatics to Israel, and they never touch Israel. Now, they chant and yell death to Israel, but they don't do anything. Instead, what they do is try to undermine countries that are Shia-oriented or friends of Iran. So in fact, and you can do your own study on this, Israel and, and Saudi Arabia, the place that stones women to death for having affairs, that cuts people's heads off for being blasphemous, and Israel are joined at the hip in the Middle East. This is amazing that this is not common knowledge in the United States. Oh, and by the way, 9-11. People have reported on this. Apparently, a lot of countries, excuse me, companies that had Israel, all Israeli employees somehow got the word not to be at work on 9-11 that morning. So, I, you know, Saudi Arabia and Al-Qaeda and all these other created entities uh, are all in bed with each other, and they all are hands off on Israel. So that tells you everything you need to know. So this murder, and again, I'm amazed that this is not being called a murder. I'm, I'm amazed that there's no U.S. Uh, legality being discussed. Uh, I'm amazed that there's no international um, legality of this being discussed. But this, this murder benefits Israel, and it benefits Saudi Arabia, the hardliners. And, it, and here's, here's the other unbelievable thing that is mostly left out of the news. This guy was an incredible opponent of ISIS, probably the most effective military commander in the entire region, and that includes the U.S.'s military. He was kicking ISIS's ass all over the place, especially in Syria and in Iraq. Let that sink in for a second. This is the guy, the guy that the United States government murdered was the biggest opponent of ISIS in the region, the most effective opponent military commander in the region. You can look this up. You know, it's, it's not hidden material. It's just not being advertised. So who benefits from ISIS running wild? Well, we know Saudi Arabia loves it. They love their Sunni friends going out there and creating havoc. Israel loves it because ISIS doesn't bother Israel. It only bothers Israel's, quote, enemies. You know, in Israel, you know, the, 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 by the way, you can talk this way in Israel. You can't talk this way in the United States. People that lay this stuff out get attacked. 
But in Israel, there's plenty of publications, there's plenty of people on the street talking about this. Good people, decent people, intelligent people. And then you have the thugs. And for them, it, it is Israel uber alles. And goal one is to, by hook or by crook, exterminate the Palestinian people and take every last scrap of their land. And they're, they're doing a, you know, a great job at it. The rest of the world, the entirety of the rest of the world, looks on in horror. But only in the United States, you know, citizens of the United States, uneducated, uninformed, propagandized, and I'm sorry to say large quantities of them bigoted, either don't care or think it's a great idea. Well, it's an ongoing international crime. But Israel's not content with taking the Palestinian territories. They have a vision of a greater Israel, which includes the land of Lebanon, land in Syria, land elsewhere in the Middle East. That's their long-term goal. And we are paying for it. Your standard of living is lower than it should be because of the money that's being sent so that Israeli citizens can live in prosperity while their government butchers the region. That's what's going on. And they have clearly taken over uh, Trump. I mean, that was pretty obvious from a long time ago, but now it's getting ridiculously obvious. All right. Well, there's one other twist to this, and this is amazing that it's not being reported. I mean, you won't find a word of this anywhere. Who provided the, quote, intelligence to justify this murder? No one's asking that question. Isn't that amazing? We murdered somebody in broad daylight, in cold blood, who is a national hero in a country of 80 million people, so popular that millions of people came out for his funeral. And no one is talking about the source of the intelligence. And no one's asking the question. As far as I know, you're listening to the first guy and the only guy asking this fundamental question. I mean, if this were a murder case, and someone said, well, I killed him because I blah, 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 the first question would be, well, who told you that this guy was X, Y, and Z? But that fundamental question isn't being asked, which just shows you how contaminated our press is, our so-called news media is. It's not even close to being legitimate. It hasn't been for decades. But when, the, when push comes to shove, uh, this is the kind of news reporting you get. None. So the question is, who provided the intelligence? Well, who provides this kind of intelligence to the United States? The NSA, right? They capture communications. They intercept communications. Uh, so if a bullshit story that, that Trump and his following is telling is true, there must have been some kind of communications captured. Maybe that will come out months from now. They'll manufacture something, and maybe right now they're listening. Right? I, I can't believe the number of times I'll say something, and a week later some, some, someone goes, oh, yeah, well, here's the, here's the intelligence we captured. Here's the recording, and they'll, they'll come up with some ridiculous recording that uh, doesn't say anything, but that suddenly becomes the proof. But anyway, that would be the, the NSA would do the uh, communication interception. And who do the analysis of this communication? Well, that would be the CIA. And I defy you, read every single story about this murder. ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, Fox, New York Times, Washington Post, Chicago Tribune, LA, you just, you know, the BBC. Read it all. And nowhere will you find the initials CIA appear anywhere in this story? How on earth is that even possible when it's the CIA's job to generate the intelligence for these kinds of actions to be uh, justified? And it gets even better. And here's the real amazing thing. In 2017, 
the CIA put a guy named Michael D'Andrea in charge of the CIA's Iranian operations. Michael D'Andrea. Have you ever heard that name? Well, if you're depending on the U.S. news media, you absolutely have not heard that name. But in 2017, this guy was put in charge of basically dirty tricks against Iran, right? Because that's what a whole wing of the CIA does. They cook up dirty tricks and they carry out dirty tricks. You know, just a little example, one of their little games during the 60s in Cuba uh, was to send uh, American spies there with Canadian passports and sabotage the food supply. And one of their little tricks was to, to mix uh, with, with a corrupt Cuban person, um, mix cement in with powdered milk that was delivered to children. That's nice, right? This is the kind of mentality uh, of that, that wing of the CIA. And the people that run them, I mean, it's, they're, just, they're just tired hands. They're just employees. They're, they're, they only exist because there's higher-ups that, that think all this stuff is a good idea. But anyway, he's in charge of dirty tricks against Iran, Michael D'Andrea. What's his pedigree? Where did he come from? Well, he's a big fan of torture. And he was involved in the rendition, the illegal rendition programs and the torture programs where they, you know, pick people off the street, sometimes the, quote, right person, sometimes the wrong person. Didn't really matter to them. And then they practiced um, various experiments to see. I mean, it's sickening to even talk about. But if you look into it, it is unbelievable what was done to human beings. And he was a big part of that. He's got blood up to his elbows. What else has he done, Michael D'Andrea? Very active in the CIA's drone war. And this is an amazing omission by our wonderful news media. The CIA runs its own drone war, independent of the Pentagon. Did you know that? Don't believe me. Just go and check it out. They run their own drone war. They set their own targets. They make their own kill lists. They fly the drones, and they kill people. And we can thank Barack Obama, the progressive president, the good guy, um, for taking what Bush the idiot, Bush Jr. the idiot started, and expanding it 20-fold. And so the CIA has its own drone assassination program. Hmm. This guy in Iran, in Iraq, the Iranian commander, was killed by a drone. Hmm. Is anybody anywhere in the news media asking if this was a CIA drone operation? The Pentagon took, took responsibility, um, but that's an old trick. Uh, if anybody remembers Waco, you know, the FBI took responsibility to the extent they did for what was going on down there. And even a child who looks at the facts knows that that was a domestic military operation. So you you know you have one group that does the dirty deed that really wasn't supposed to. That's not enti- that's not enabled, entitled to legally. That shouldn't be doing what they're doing. And another group takes the the, the heat for it. And we know that Waco is a military operation because of all the military equipment that was parked in Waco the night before the original raid. I don't want to go off on a tangent, but you can't move that kind of armor from Fort Hood down to Waco uh, the night before a law enforcement raid unless it's a military operation. And you can't use equipment like that. They said, oh, yeah, FBI agents were running the tanks. Are you kidding me? Are you joking? The Pentagon doesn't give tanks and armored personnel carriers to domestic law enforcement uh, and, and then let them run them in, a, in an operation like that of their, their own equipment. I'm not talking about like, you know, giving the equipment, you know, because we, <laughs> the military has given armored personnel carriers, by the way, none of which have been de- decontaminated properly, to police departments. Then the police department owns it. It's been transferred and then they can play and do all their stupid things that they do with it. But they don't lend their equipment 
that their you know another equipment is still there. They don't lend it and then let some FBI person run it. So that so anyway, Waco was a military operation, and I we could we could go into that in another call. But the point is, who carried out this murder? Was it actually the Pentagon, or was it the CIA? That's a question that should be asked. And it doesn't matter who took the public blame. That's, a, that's childish to think that, that that matters. Okay, so we've got this Michael D'Andrea. He was put in charge of the Iranian Dirty Tricks Department in the, for, against Iran. He's a huge torture fan. He's, he was very active in the CIA's drone war. Oh, he's the guy that was supposedly looking for Osama bin Laden all those years. Oops, he snuck out of Afghanistan. Oops, we can't find him for years and years and years and years. Now, here's where it gets so interesting. Michael D'Andrea, the head of dirty tricks against Shia Iran, the guy that couldn't find Osama bin Laden, the Sunni extremist terrorist supported by Saudi Arabia is a Sunni Muslim. Look it up. I, and this, how could this not be in the news? This is unbelievable. The guy, the, the CIA's top man for carrying out dirty tricks against Shia Iran is a Sunni Muslim. Don't be fooled by his name. He married a, a woman that's a Sunni. She demanded that he become one. He was down with it. So the guy that's very active in, in the CIA's drone war couldn't find Osama bin Laden, who loves torture, is a Sunni Muslim, and his name in this assassination, this murder, never comes up. The CIA never comes up. The question of who, what intelligence was there that even remotely justified this never comes up. The source of this intelligence never comes up. Nowhere in the news. And the consideration of who is harmed by this, the United States is harmed by this, Americans are harmed by this, you're a lot less safe now. You know, Iranians have a long memory. This will be multi-generational. So you're less safe. The stability of the Middle East, which we don't benefit, normal people don't benefit from instability in the Middle East. Defense contractors benefit from instability in the Middle East. Your standard of living is being driven lower and lower. And lower. Why, do, why do we have in health stats, why are our health stats we're like 39th now at this point. We're not the healthiest country. We're not the second healthiest country. We're not the 10th healthiest country. We're not the 20th healthiest country. We're not the 30th healthiest country. And we're declining. We're actually losing population to illness now instead of growing. And it's hitting the uh, 20 to, to 50 age group really hard. That's a sign of a failing nation. So, and, and, you know, how long you live <laughs> and what you die of is kind of a baseline of standard of living. So our standard of living is going down. Hey, yeah, if you have money, life's great. There's no better place to live. If you have money and everything's fine, you don't have any problems. But most modern societies give some thought to their citizens' well-being. I mean, why wouldn't you? But not the USA. USA, you're on your own. And if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, those are the breaks. Meanwhile, we need your tax dollars to destabilize the Middle East. Why? Does it benefit us? Benefits one country it's, that has its tentacles into every single U.S. politician and every single U.S. news media outlet. 
were being re- we were being led around by the nose by Israel and people within the CIA who believe in Israel's mission. And Israel's mission is to you know exterminate the Palestinian people, take all that land, and then branch out and start taking pieces of a chaotic, weak, and unstable Middle East, Lebanon, Syria, parts of Iraq, anything they can get their hands on. That's the long-term goal. And there are people in the United States government that think that's a great idea. They're our buddies, so we want our buddies to, to you know, be in place there. So that's the news as we see it. I'm astonished that nobody's asking any of these questions, these fundamental questions, who benefits, what was the intelligence, where did the intelligence come from, and why is a Sunni Muslim <laughs> running the CIA's dirty tricks against Iran department. So that's Brass Check, and that's the news. <laughs>